All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I wanted to start saying it's uh, cool to see all these faces here in real life. I remember doing a talk in uh, Corona times and talking into this black screen, uh, getting no feedback, so uh, cool to be here. Um, so let's get started. Um, and I want to get started with, uh, with some hands and I have three questions. Uh, so, have you ever experienced your new deck not showing up in the Airflow UI? And have you ever experienced your code changes not showing up in the Airflow UI? <laughs> and have you ever found yourself F5ing and waiting for changes to show up in the Airflow UI? Well, I see a lot of hands today. Um, and if the answer to any of these three questions is yes, then, well, this talk is for you. Uh, so, a little bit about me. Um, yeah, Solution Architect and Astronomer, co-author of the book, Data Pipelines with Apache Airflow and Committer on the on the open source project. Um, so I spend a lot of time with Airflow, obviously uh, in my professional time, sometimes also in my personal time. And I wanted to start this presentation with a little video that I uh, I made a long time ago. And this was back in 2019, as you can see from the UI. And uh, the UI is currently empty. There are no DAGs. And in the terminal, I'm adding a DAG to the DAGs folder. So I saved it now. There's now a file and now I start refreshing. So especially if you work with customers, this is very awkward and you have to do some talking to fill up the awkward space. And this usually goes on for anywhere between zero and five minutes. So you refresh and you refresh and you refresh and nothing happens. <laughs> and then you refresh a little bit more. And this is pretty awkward. Well, there you see it. And then back in the day, you got this atomic bomb. Well, this is now a solved problem. Um, I originally made this video for dexilarization, which yeah, Volker said, uh, he's uh, working on a lot. Other people have worked on a lot as well. So you don't really get these atomic bombs anymore, but this uh, refreshing behavior that still exists. And I, al I always remember it was one of my first experiences with Airflow. I set it up and I originally uh, thought I did something wrong, did a whole reinstall uh, until I learned how Airflow works internally. And it's just part of Airflow. But it always stuck with me as being one of the most annoying problems. So I set out on a, on a side mission to solve this. Um, oh. So I might, yeah, there we go. Um, so I implemented a, uh, a um, event-based deck parser, but before going there, I want to quickly reiterate how Airflow works internally and why this is even a problem in Airflow. So when you open up the Airflow documentation, um, what you get is something like this. The the bare minimum components of Airflow uh, are a web server, a scheduler, and a database in which metadata is stored. And the scheduler reads files that you put in the DAX folder, evaluates those, and puts the metadata that it finds there into the database. And you as a user then go to the web server, which then creates a database and presents you whatever is stored in the database. Now, if we look a little bit deeper into the scheduler. It actually consists of multiple things. Uh, so one is a scheduling loop, and this is responsible for scheduling tasks. So it looks at various criteria. For example, is a uh, schedule met, and are dependencies of the task met? And then when that, that, that is true, it sends a signal to the executor to say, go run this task. But there's a second component, and that's called the DAG parser. And the DAG parser, uh, which is inside the scheduler, is responsible for reading files in your DAGs folder uh, serial and serializing those into the database. So that's what we'll focus on today. And I want to point out one configuration item that, that um, helped me a lot in development, and that's Airflow scheduler standalone DAG processor is true, 
and that exists since Airflow 2 free. And that helped me a lot because it uh, um, allows you to separate the scheduling process and the DAG processing process, uh, which helps a lot during development and testing. But also, as a uh, user of Airflow, you might want to do this uh, to separate out the processes and, uh, for example, run them on separate machines uh, to give them different resource allocations. So if we take yet another closer look at the DAG parser, it does four things at a high level. So starting with the first, uh, it's refresh DAGDIR. And refresh DAGDIR is a function or method that creates a list of files in your DAG folder that, are, that probably contain a DAG and are not ignored by an Airflow ignore file. So it's, what it does at a high level is it just lists everything and then matches that against an Airflow ignore file that it finds. And uh, then it checks if it might contain a DAG by checking if the words Airflow and the word DAG occur in that file. It's a very quick heuristic to check if it might be a DAG. Um, then the resulting list of files goes to a method called prepare file path queue. And this orders all these files in a certain way, um, usually by a last process time or last modified time. And it sends those file paths to a queue. Then in step three, start new processes. Um, this starts processes that are responsible for parsing those files and it reads those files from that queue one by one and starts a so-called DAG file processor process for each of those files. And those, where's it coming from? And those DAG file processor processes, they are um, yeah, essentially processes that read the files that you put in the DAG folder one by one and evaluate those files and then serialize those in the into the database. So four steps that um, take your DAG file and eventually get your, the, the data of the DAG into the database. So if we look at the configuration items that we can use to configure that whole process, um, the most important one is the configuration DAG DR list interval. By default, this is set to 300 seconds in Airflow, so five minutes. And this is a, um, yeah, this number controls how often Airflow checks for new files in your DAX folder. And if you're on the wrong side of this interval, so if you add a, uh, a new file and you still have to wait 299 seconds, well, that's that waiting time that you experience in the UI uh, because of this setting. So for a lot of customers, it's often perfectly fine to lower this to 30 seconds. And then Airflow would just scan more often, which comes with higher resource usage. But in most cases, that's, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it obviously, uh, you have to balance this a little bit. Then for the, the method prepare file path queue, there's another, uh, there's a setting called min file process interval. By default, this is 30 seconds. And this, um, this is a threshold to select files for reprocessing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, and, but the important thing here is that the files that were modified, uh, those are not regarded in this case, but it does apply to, for example, dynamic DAGs, uh, which, which are not modified, but occur on, or uh, depend on some external factor. <laughs> then there's a, also a setting related to start new processes. By default, the value is two, and this controls how many processes Airflow spins up for parsing your DAG files. Uh, by default, this is two, but if you have a ton of resources and a ton of DAG files, yeah, might be worth bumping this up. And lastly, related to waiting times in the Airflow UI, is this configuration called auto refresh interval. 
default, this is uh, the default for this config is free, and that's three seconds. And that controls how often the Airflow interface refreshes the data that is presented to you. So obviously, if you lower this, you get faster updates, but also more requests to your web server, which comes with a higher load. Now, my main frustration with the Airflow UI is that new files can take up to five minutes with the default settings to get processed. And the user, or you, have no way of knowing where in this cycle of five minutes you are. Um, so I, I set out on a mission to finally solve this once and for all. Uh, and, I don't, and I don't want to have, have to press F5 anymore. So as with any problem that I uh, face, I uh, usually start with a bit of Googling. And I came across this uh, watchdog package. Um, was uh, like a result number one in Google. And um, the thing I liked about it is it provides an API, which is cross-platform, uh, for monitoring file system events. And by cross-platform, I mean it provides a single API that um, regardless of what platform you're running on, so Linux or Mac or some other pl platform, um, provides the same API to the developer. And if you're running on some obscure operating system, it will default to just pulling the file system, uh, keeping track of things in memory, and if there's any change, emit an event. Uh, out of all the, I think, 10, 15 packages that I found, they also seem the most actively maintained and use the same license as Airflow. So I decided to go with Watchdog. And in a nutshell, uh, what I did is I implemented a so-called event handler, and an event handler in uh, Watchdog terms is essentially a mapping between file system events and user-defined functions. So if Watchdog says, hey, there was a uncreated event, then I can supply a function that says, okay, if a file was created, let's start processing it. Um, so th that's a bit of a, that's a big shift from having to wait for an interval to come along uh, and process all the files. Now I can wait for an event to happen and start processing that file immediately. Um, I tell Watchdog to watch for changes in the DAG folder and then make it trigger a, uh, yeah, four different things. Um, there's four different types of events in Watchdog. So create a file, move the file from a to B, uh, modify the file. So if you make any change to a file, it will emit a modified event. And if you delete a file, it will trigger an undeleted event. So you implement functions for all these events. So small demo of how that works. So I have four screens here. In the top left, I have Airflow. It's currently empty. There are no DAGs. On the right, I have my editor. There's currently a DAG. And in the bottom, I have two folders. Now, first to run the DAG processor. So it says, started watching file changes in my DAG folder. And then I'll create a new file by dragging this file into my DAX folder. And if you now look at the Airflow UI, you already see, hey, there's a DAG. You don't have to wait for it to appear anymore. And in the logs, we can display interesting things such as detected creation and found a DAG in this file. So. For me as an engineer, it's super exciting because yeah, I don't have to F5 anymore. And if we look at the timestamps, there was like 0 0.03 seconds in between the detection of the creation event and the actual processing of the file. Now in my DAG, I have a commented line here. 
that says tags hello airflow summit. Now I'll uncomment this and press save. And it will say detected modification of a file. <laughs> And as you can see, the tags also appear straight away in the user interface without having to refresh. So to put this in a uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> summary slide, waiting for new tags. Well, you don't have to wait 300 seconds anymore or anywhere in between zero and 300 seconds, um, but you just, create a file and it immediately start processing. So yeah, very excited that I don't have to talk my way through an Opera demo and have, have to press a five anymore, but it just shows up straight away. Um, during this project, I faced a couple of uh, challenges and I wanted to show one of those, which was the Airflow ignore file. So say we added a new file but the file path is ignored by an Airflow ignore pattern. Well, by default, this is uh, the uh, that uh, watchdog will only give you a event on the new DAG, but not on the Airflow ignore file because that's not modified. So uh, you have to, yeah, I had to come up with some mechanism to say, okay, I also have to watch for dependent files. Uh, so in this case, I, I was able to process airflow ignore files a little bit more intelligent, intelligently than just uh, collecting all airflow ignore files. And I was able to uh, just say, okay, give me the airflow ignore file in the current folder and all the way up to the root folder, but not everything in yeah, other folders in the DAG folder. Um, so another demo. So at the top, you now again see an air empty airflow. There's no DAGs. And at the bottom, I have my editor, IntelliJ. I have two files here. One is called new DAG. And second is an airflow ignore file with a pattern that says new underscore DAG. So since the name of my DAG file is called new DAG.py, the airflow ignore file should uh, ignore this file and it, it's not allowed to show in the Airflow UI. So the so we're watching for file changes again in my DAG folder and I'm going to drag this file into my DAG folder. You will again Show the new DAG appear. I found a DAG. Everything okay so far. And now I'm going to drag my Airflow ignore file into the DAGs folder. And since it contains the, the pattern new DAG, yeah, we, we don't want my DAG to show up anymore because it matches this pattern. So here it said, detect the creation of the Airflow ignore file. It evaluated all the patterns that it found in the Airflow ignore file and uh, file names that it found in the DAG directory. So therefore, it's removing metadata for this file since it's ignored by this Airflow ignore file. And eventually it says process Airflow ignore and we see no more DAGs in the UI because it's now ignored by the Airflow ignore file. Now, if we remove the pattern, it will detect a modification of the file and it shows up again. So you don't have to wait uh, and refresh anymore in the UI. So that's two things that I um, that I uh, yeah that I showed. So uh, 
adding new Python files to the airflow uh, to uh, to the DAX folder and adding and modifying airflow ignore files. Uh, and but what I showed mostly was watchdog and watching for changes and processing those changes immediately and getting data into the database. But there was one more key to this puzzle, and that's the web server because the web server actually doesn't reload everything that you see in the UI. Uh, there is this other refresh button, but it's actually not responsible for refreshing everything that you see in the UI. It actually only refreshes the green parts. <laughs> uh, so uh, stuff related to DAG runs and task runs and uh, last, uh, last and next run information. But the things you see in red are actually not auto refresh. You still have to press F5 for that. Um, so I implemented two new endpoints in the web server, one for the stuff in red and one for the stuff in blue. Uh, so the red parts are like DAG counts and overall DAG statistics. And the blue parts are more related to individual DAGs. Uh, so that's why I implemented two new endpoints. And with that, finally, we complete the whole cycle. And uh, when I or you as a user add a file to the DAX folder, then Watchdog uh, processes those files immediately, data ends up in the database, and the web server automatically reloads that. So that was the demo, uh, there's some future work to this. So actually uh, 10 minutes before this presentation, I opened up a PR. <laughs> Feel free to check it out, give some feedback. Um, yeah, or that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, one of the things I noticed and didn't touch yet is there's SLA processing logic kind of entangled in this DAX processing. Um, my assumption is because there's this always on cycle, it was kind of used for just checking for SLAs. Uh, and maybe another optimization in the web server is uh, replacing polling by something that can just push changes immediately, uh, like WebSockets. Um, also, when I discussed this with people, uh, the first thing they asked, yeah, but what about dynamic DAX? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, dynamic DAX, uh, so, for those that might not know, uh, dynamic DAGs are code that stays the same, but depend on some external factor that controls the structure of the DAG. So, an, a simple example is um, querying S3 for a list of files and then using that list of files to generate tasks. So, the code in the DAG stays the same, but the structure differs. Um, simple answer is I think an event based DAG parser will probably live together with a, yeah, let's call it a batch-based DAG, DAG parser to account for both dynamic DAGs and non-dynamic DAGs. Um, there's also a couple of more technical quirks. Uh, so for example, macOS I found copies a file by first creating an empty file and then modifying the contents. Um, and that triggers two events, a created event and a modified event. Um, and this is kind of a problem if your DAG files take very long to process. So there's there's some uh, some tricks you can do do to to fix that. But right now my implementation just processes every event. Uh, so final words: uh, the current DAG parser implementation is probably a little bit easier because it just scans everything, and that's it, and parses everything in one go. Uh, Event-based DAG parsing. I think is a little bit more complex to, to implement because it you have to um, um, process events on individual files, but also take dependent files into account. But it does provide for a nicer user experience with immediate updates and not having to press that F5 button anymore. So thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>